Hey, hey, all you mentees, Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And join me for my quick overview of the Who is Wonder Woman Deluxe Edition from DC Comics. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're looking at here is the latest deluxe edition from DC Comics. And I'm very happy to say that it's Wonder Woman, who hasn't been shown a lot of love in the deluxe edition department, or for that matter, in Omnibus edition, even though she probably has more than Superman. I, I actually she thinks she does post-Crisis post, uh, Superman. But anyway, uh, so this is Who is Wonder Woman? And this takes place immediately after Infinite Crisis. So there was that one year gap called New 52, or I'm sorry, 52. And every book got relaunched under the one year later mark. So I'll talk a little bit about what that means when I look inside of the artwork. But this is a deluxe edition. So it is as tall as an omnibus. And here's what the spine looks like. And the design of this wraparound dust jacket with artwork by series artist Terry Dodson right here. I love the spinning action and then revealing Wonder Woman right there. And who is Wonder Woman? Well, that is the question. Now, I've talked about this being one of the best jumping on points for the character in the past, and I still stand by that. Here's what the flaps look like. Now, this has been previously released as a standard size hardcover, and this came out many years ago. Actually, they were doing a really good job of putting them out in standard size hardcovers and then bringing them out in trade paperbacks. But there's never been a deluxe edition of this, despite the popularity of the writer and the character. So the art on board is that of Terry Dotson's Wonder Woman. And of course, Rachel Dotson is wife, is the inker. Uh, but before I go any further, I want to give a huge thank you to Organic Price Books for sending us a copy of this deluxe edition. So we're going to crack this book open. We'll do a little comparison to that of the standard edition and see what's missing and what this one has that, that the, the standard doesn't have. And of course, talk about the story in here. So in case you haven't read Infinite Crisis or you don't know anything about the 52 era or the one year later era, there might be some talk of some minor spoilers, nothing too big. But just in case, I do like warning people ahead of time. All right, let's go ahead and crack it open and check out this beautiful artwork and talk about the story by Alan Heinberg. All right, so we're going to go ahead and crack it open. Look at the sparkles right there on the end sheets. Who is Wonder Woman Deluxe Edition? And artwork again by Terry Dotson and Rachel Dotson being his inker. Alex Sinclair being the colorist. There are backup stories right here by Gary Frank uh, doing the pencils and then John Sabal doing the inks and here we go with Wonder Woman number one so they relaunched the series so this takes place after Greg Ruckus run and right after Infinite Crisis so this collects Wonder Woman 1 through 4 the 2006 relaunch and Wonder Woman annual number one um, and I'll talk a little bit about why <laughs> that one came out about a year later so we kick it off with this dialogue right here, talking about what it means to be Wonder Woman, how she came from Themyscira, and what it's like to live in the world of man, and how people see her as a champion of gods, child of the Amazon. And it turns out that it's not Diana. It's not Wonder Woman. It's Donna Troy, formerly known as Wonder Girl, but now going as the new Wonder Woman. So for some reason... I'm not going to go into detail because I think this does an amazing job of letting you know why exactly. Diana has decided to take a step back after all the accusations and everything that happened before Infinite Crisis. See, this is what I mean. Like, I think it's very important to read at least Infinite Crisis before jumping onto this. But regardless, she has decided to take a step back. And now Donna Troy, formerly known as Wonder Girl, is our new Wonder Woman. So her... One of the first missions she gets sent on is in Washington, D.C. Hey, the Natural Museum of History right here. My daughter and I just went there a couple weeks ago. Steve Trevor's being kidnapped by a couple of terrorists, one of them being Cheetah. So you have Minerva back. And you also have Giganta. 
Now, Minerva looks a little more human than before, so this is the new incarnation of her. Keep in mind, eh, one year later was kind of a soft boot. It wasn't a hard reboot for the DC Universe. But she rescues Steve Trevor, but ends up getting kidnapped by Dr. Psycho, who is pretending to be the original Wonder Woman, Diana, right there. So Donna Troy gets kidnapped by them and taken somewhere. So now it's up to Steve Trevor, now going as Nemesis, working for the government, along with this young lady right here, Agent Diana Prince. So we've seen that character before in the 70s, but this is kind of like a new take on the character. But that's what this is about. This is about what it means to be Wonder Woman and who exactly she is. Because it's not just Donna Troy that you see through here. You see Cassie show up through here. Uh, you see another big surprise that a uh, character that turns into Wonder Woman too that I didn't see coming, but I thought, oh, that actually works. Um... But then you see how Batman played a role in helping Wonder Woman start out this new identity as the new metahuman relations uh, working for the government. And I thought that was really cool because it shows their connection. But if you're reading Batman one year later, the the story that kicks off with Face to Face, um, then you know that, wait a minute, how did that take place? Again, I think Alan Heinberg was just kind of doing his own thing, and the editors were like, hey, it's Alan Heinberg. He comes from television. He can do whatever he wants to. Now that guy's blown up. I think the last thing I saw him working on was the Sandman TV show, which was excellent. Uh, but the unfortunate thing about this is that even though it was four issues, uh, they took forever to come out, almost a year in between like one of the issues, so much so that they had to continue the run. They had to go with issue number five without finishing up the big cliffhanger that happened in issue four. So what they did, kind of like Old Man Logan, uh, they finished it up in an annual. And they were like, go and check out the annual to see how this story wraps up. So that's pretty much what ended up happening back then because the, the delays were just so bad. They had, had uh, Jody Picot and then eventually uh, Gail Simone step in as the new writer of Wonder Woman. But this is a really cool era. I think it's one of the best jumping on points because... You're not just introduced to the character of Wonder Woman, even though it's not Wonder Woman at first, but I mean, I'm pretty sure most people probably know that Diana eventually becomes Wonder Woman again. But it also introduces us to the concept of why Wonder Woman needs to exist. Who is she? And it, it's about a woman that has just gone on a self-discovery journey and why she decides to come back. I thought it was it, it had some awesome moments in here, not just for diana but also donna troy and cassie gets some moments to shine through here uh <laughs> there's a lot of throwbacks to like george pedes's era of wonder woman uh there's some stuff from i would say john burns run in here so it's got a little bit of everything from every just about every run and that's why i enjoyed this but heinberg does a really good job of also introducing some of her supporting cast and her arch nemesis like she has this big array of like different villains that she's fought over the decades and to kind of modernize them and bring them all together that all takes place in the annual then she has a big team up and you see her role exactly in justice league and in justice society so it's a really fun read with beautiful and i mean absolutely beautiful it's probably my favorite uh favorite uncanny i'm gonna talk pretty one day uh my favorite work from Terry Dotson and Rachel Dotson. That and their black cat run. Meow. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, but yes, th it is a very short story. It's a very short collection. This book retails for $29.99. Let's uh, actually look at the extras. I can tell you right now, the thing that's missing from the very beginning is the introduction by Brian K. Vaughn. There is no introduction like in the original standard size. But let's look at the back matter. Oh, but before we do, this is the back story right here. Kind of telling you a chronological history of Wonder Woman throughout the years. And it's drawn by Gary Frank. There we go. So visualizing a new series such as concepts, artwork in here, character designs. Reimagining some of the villains, some cover art. Beautiful. I... I love the way he draws Wonder Woman. Like that to me is Wonder Woman. Like it, it's absolutely up there with George Perez's take on Wonder Woman. Now, as I mentioned, this is a short story. It's 151 pages, retailing for $29.99. Let's look at the binding. 
So we have glued binding and they're using this matte paper for the paper stock right here. So let's actually do a comparison to this book because I must have read this so many times. I know this one for a fact has glossy paper stock. Uh, also glued binding because it is a standard size hardcover. But this one here has an introduction by Brian K. Vaughn. And I wanted to show what the art looks like compared to the glossy paper. Uh, for the people that are like, oh, it's matte paper. It's going to be trash. Yeah, really, I mean, the colors stand out really well. Like the blacks right there, more so than over here. They seem like they're a little grayed out over here for the dark tones. The double page spread looks like that. For glued binding, that's pretty good. You get more artwork loss right here than you do right here. Yes, you still have to hold it down to see her beautiful cheekbones right there. But, I mean, at least it's not like her eye is missing. And just a little more comparison with the internal panels right here and the colors. See, I think the colors really pop out a little more over here in the deluxe edition. Maybe it's just me. Maybe just a little bit more. Now, as far as the extras, this version right here has the covers all the way in the back. And then some of the sketchbook. But you get more of the sketchbook in this deluxe edition there's a lot more sketches and character designs than that standard size trade paperback so really or hardcover what you're really missing is just the introduction by brian k vaughn um because all the covers for this collection are intact right before the issue starts and they tell you the issue number and then the artist like penciler inker and the colorist but that's it Go and check this out. It's really worth the read, especially if you've ever wondered about Wonder Woman. That, as they say, is that. And that was the content, the page count, and build of the Deluxe Edition. And a comparison really quick to that of the standard size hardcover. It's one of the best jumping on points for Wonder Woman. It's one of my favorite stories, even though it took way too long to come out. But, you know, if you've never read it and you're waiting for collected editions you really wouldn't know any different. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. But more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.